Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over the upcoming polar vortex which is going to be coming down from Canada and the Arctic Circle and making its way through into the eastern and central United States. We're going to go back into a colder and more favorable pattern for snowfall and we're going to be talking about all of that and more in today's video. Uh, so make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end. So here's what the current National Weather Service page looks like and it is actually quite active. Uh, we do have some winter weather advice. In the, in the purples for uh, parts of the Tennessee Valley and the central and southern Appalachians as well as into the interior northeast especially as you get a little bit of elevation added on there. Here's uh, some winter storm watches in effect for parts of Montana, as well as some high wind watches and wind advisories for northern California. We also see some freeze warnings and frost advisories for northern Florida, as well as some freeze warnings uh, in effect for parts of southern Texas there. Uh, and that's from the upcoming cold air that's going to be taking place. And you should really start to feel the colder air probably around the 19th or so. So just in about three or four days, we're going to start to go into this colder pattern uh, and I just want to address the people who have been commenting saying that the winter is over because we've had a two-week stretch where it's been milder and not as much precipitation uh, I really don't think that's going to be the case I think my my winter forecast is still going to hold true just because we are going into so much of a colder pattern and we will be so much more active than what we were seeing in the other cold pattern back in early most uh, January and late December where it was dry but cold we're going to go into a cold pattern but this time we're actually going to have uh, precipitation along with it and it won't be as dry as the previous one so I still think that we will be seeing a snowier winter on average uh, just for those of you who are thinking that the winter's over just because it's the middle of January and you haven't seen snow in two weeks so uh, we still do have snow on the way and there's still models actually picking up on more snow in the coming days so here's what the 10 millibar geopotential heights are showing uh, and 10 millibars is about uh, 90,000 to 105,000 feet up in the atmosphere so of course it's going to take a while for that to make its way down to the surface so you want to take about 10 to 14 days uh, and add that on so uh, just to give you an example this is what the polar vortex looks like right now we have it split we have one uh, south of Greenland we have another one up in Europe uh, and the one up in Europe is making a lot more impacts right now uh, and this would be for today which is the 16th so you add 10 to 14 days to that that would be January 26th to the 30th when you should feel this on the surface when a, a pattern like this would be on the surface now because we've been in actually a very cold geopotential height anomaly pattern where up in the atmosphere it's actually been quite cold uh, and it hasn't been translating down to the surface it has been that 10 to 14 days already and that's why we're going to start to get some of that colder air that's been locked up a hundred thousand feet up in the atmosphere start to spill down a little bit and start to actually translate down to the surface so let's play this out and let's show you uh, what's going to happen. And before we do that, just uh, I want you to uh, kind of fo focus on uh, two different areas. So we have these two areas right here. These are your polar vortexes. We have a ridge over Alaska. Uh, so this is an area of higher pressure, a ridge of, uh, of warmer air that's being pulled up into Alaska. And then we also have some of this warmer air, uh, what we would call a stratospheric warming event, that's going to take place over northern and especially central Europe there, where you're going to start to see some more of those oranges and reds indicating that you're seeing a rapid warming and what that's going to do is force this cold air down into North America so uh, let's play this out here and let's see what's going to happen here would be by uh, tomorrow here's by the ja January 18th Monday here's by Tuesday and here's by Wednesday so let's stop it here and let's break down what's going on we have a the polar vortex up here in uh, parts of Scandinavia and then kind of going back over the Arctic Circle and we're seeing that stratospheric warming event over Europe and Asia there uh, where you are dealing with some of those oranges and reds popping up uh, over those areas we see that we have a general shape of troughing into the uh, eastern United States and we also do see those blues over much of the United States so even though we don't see the generalized shape of troughing for much of the US because we do have those colder anomalies that is going to allow some more of that cold air to filter in there here to be by January 21st 
Here's by the 22nd. Here's by the 23rd. And what we've noticed now is that this polar vortex actually goes back into Europe. And it's really wanted to go back into Europe. It's favorable to go back into Europe. Uh, but we're not into those orange shades. And when you get into the orange shades, that's where you're going to be uh, warmer. That's where you're typically going to have uh, more of a milder pattern. We're not dealing with that. We're actually in the blues, uh, which, again, is indicating colder than normal anomalies up up high in the atmosphere. So we're not in a necessarily milder pattern but we're not in an overly cold pattern just yet this is your ridge over Alaska this is your polar vortex and here's your stratospheric warming event and that's what's going to be shoving this uh, system and this polar vortex out of Europe out of Asia and back through into North America so you see this slowly retreat further to uh, the west and also start to make its way further south into North America here would be by the 28th, and we're looking at the stratospheric warming event uh, funneling more of that colder air down into the United States with, uh, again, more of that warmer air over Russia, Mongolia, China, and back through uh, parts of eastern uh, or of western, uh, western Asia there and eastern Europe. And then you continue to see through the 29th, here's by the 30th, and this is when it really starts to dip down into the United States. So this is when it's going to be overly cold, uh, and this is when it's really going to get into into the, the phase where uh, the term polar vortex is going to be thrown around a, a lot more because we will see the start to dip into Canada and eventually into the United States. This is the GFS model and usually it's quite consistent on the uh, higher up uh, in the uh, higher up in the atmosphere it usually does get more consistent. It's not like these surface maps that you'll see where it's showing a snowstorm 330 hours out and then on the next run it doesn't show that. With the upper air it really doesn't shift a lot so don't expect this to change too much over the next three or four days. Here would be by uh, the last day of January, the 31st, and then here would be by February 1st, which is the last day of this model run, uh, and we're dealing with that polar vortex sitting over northern Canada. It's a very wound up polar vortex, and that's actually good if you like cold, uh, not so good if you like a lot of snow, because that might allow more of that colder air to overtake. Uh, we'll have to see how strong that polar vortex is. If it's actually too strong and you have too much cold air, you'll actually get into a pattern like what we were dealing with in late December and early January, where uh, you were you couldn't even get any pre precipitation just because of how cold it was uh, and just because that drier air was pu uh, pulling all those storms further to the south now here would be what the GFS is showing on the actual uh, uh, temperature anomalies and we're gonna look at couple thousand feet up in the atmosphere this is about four or five thousand feet up uh, and we're going to show you this just because it is a little bit more averaged out and it's a little bit more consistent than what you see on the two meter maps uh, because those really take into account localities and you really don't know how accurate those are going to be I like to use the 850 um, HPA uh, maps just because I feel like they are a little bit more consistent in the reds and the browns that's where you're dealing with some above normal temperatures in the upper parts of the atmosphere below normal temperatures in the blues, greens, purples, and even into the magenta colors. So here would be by uh, January 17th, so tomorrow. Here would be by the 18th. Here's by the 19th. So uh, here's something that we noticed. We have some cold air start to form over southern and central Canada and through the upper Midwest and uh, parts of the northern plains. And that's going to allow somewhat of a filter of cold air. If you follow where uh, these uh, these little lines are going, they're coming straight out of the Arctic Circle. You have a thin, narrow gap in between these two ridges. And that's allowing some cold air to funnel in through there and then where you don't have a lot of systems moving through uh, and where it's a lot more of a uh, of a blank slate over the United States, all that cold air is filling in uh, two parts of the United States from the West Coast to the East Coast. And overall, it's a cold pattern for much of the country except for the uh, desert Southwest. Here would be by Wednesday, the, the 20th. Here would be by the 21st. Uh, and we're looking at uh, maybe this getting it back into a more of a warmer pattern. We're dealing with more... Uh, of warmer air over the central uh, part of the country, but uh, watch out for these two things. We're going to see this first system bump into parts of British Columbia, and that's going to allow a lot more cold air to be unleashed over the west. And also, we're going to be dealing with this little area expanding into a much bigger area of, uh, co of colder temperatures over the central and eastern United States. So here to be by uh, the 22nd, here's by the 23rd, and you can see how that really expanded, and now it's covering much of the north 
northern part of the country and you just see that by the 24th here's by the 25th uh, and we're looking at another wave of colder air moving in uh, over the Midwest so that would be uh, a fairly potent area of colder air here would be by the 26th here's by the 27th and you can see how we just stay in this generally colder pattern and something that uh, if you were to look at the first frame of this model and compare this to what we're seeing uh, in the last frame of this model you would notice that we have more of that colder air up here which is good because even though you want that cold air to be down further to the south if you like cold and snow that's allowing more of that cold air to really build up and eventually that will be unleashed and it's not as if it's very far up it's not being tucked up in the arctic this is up through southern canada and into the northwest so this isn't very far away uh, and this cold air can easily uh, move further to the south so uh, if you do like cold and snow uh, definitely this is a good favorable pattern that we're going into for the first uh, for the last part of January and into the first part of February at least. So here to be the snowfall uh, maps and this is an average of about of, of, of about 51 models or so with the European ensembles uh, and they basically take every model they run the model and they see how much snowfall it produces and then for each individual spot they average it out over the 51 models and they take the mean of that and then they put that on the map and that's what we're looking at right here so this would be through 10 days the average snowfall and I really don't use this for the exact amounts uh, because that's not really what it's meant to be used for I use it for more of a percent chance that you'll see snow if you're in just the grays that's where you have a decent chance of seeing snow I would say under 30% once you're in the blues that's where it's around 50 50 chance uh, but as you get into the darker blues or even into the purples that's where you're near a hundred percent chance uh, not 70 to 100 percent chance of seeing snow and especially as you get into those pinks that's where you have some of those higher amounts uh, or higher chances of seeing snow and just uh, kind of to give you uh, ju just uh, kind of a warning this model was made on January 14th so it was run on the 14th so it's about two days old, but it really doesn't change too much. So uh, let's play this through. So this is the over the next 10 days, how much snowfall is expecting. And you can see there's quite a bit of areas that are over that two inch line, over the blue line. Here would be what it's showing over the next 30 days. So through February 13th, and we definitely have a decent chance if you live anywhere throughout this region right here of seeing some snowfall and of seeing a decent accumulating measurable snowfall that's over half a foot or so uh, over the next uh, over the next 30 days here's over the next 45 days and you can see that line pushes further to the south and now a lot more areas are even into that pink which is on this map indicating 12 or more inches uh, and you can see that really over much of the country into the northwest through the Rockies and into parts of the Great Lakes and through the northeast so a lot of areas really do have a decent shot of seeing snowfall over the next few weeks uh, I would say over the next about six weeks we still have until mid-March or even late March in some of those areas to see some snowfall some areas don't even end their winter uh, in the Midwest or the Rockies until April so we really don't we're not really running out of time uh, and I definitely think there's a ton of time for this pattern to change and there's still so much time for you to make up uh, your averages and make up the snowfall that you didn't get in the early part of January so definitely don't worry if you do like cold and snow and you want an above average winter I still think you're gonna have a fairly backloaded winter the last part of January and at least the first part of February maybe even through the entire month of February maybe even into March is looking quite favorable for cold and snow so definitely I wouldn't lose hope just yet so uh, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video please consider liking the video subscribe and turning on notifications and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye